My name is Chris Thorogood and I'm a botanist based here at the University of Oxford Botanic Garden and I'm joined by Javi. I'm Javi and I'm a first year PhD student at the Mathematical Institute supervised by Derek and Dominic. And together Javi and I are joined by this monster. So this is a, a replica of the world's largest flower, Rafflesia. It's a genus of about 40 or so species of plant that grow only in the rainforests of Southeast Asia. It's the world's largest flower spanning a metre across and it's quite extraordinary isn't it Javi? Correct and so Chris came to us with a few questions and he thought we might be a good um, team to join forces and understand the biology of Rafflesia. So we're particularly interested in seeing how we can model this mathematically to understand why Rafflesia is so big, why it has different shapes, and also the role of these thorny processes uh, on the interior of the flower. One of the things I love about working in Oxford is that we take a question and then we forget which discipline we work in, whether it's maths or biology or chemistry perhaps, and we just say, how does this thing work? Why is it the way it is? Um, and that's something we did, isn't it, with Rafflesia. We said, you know, why is this flower so big? We have some ideas, but we don't really know that much about how it's pollinated. In this case, Rafflesia produces the world's largest flower that smells of rotting meat. So I've seen these, I work on these in Southeast Asia and I can attest that the, the smell can be pretty bad. Um, and flies come in their droves and, and crowd inside this central cavity here um, to cross-pollinate the Rafflesia flowers. But you know, there's so much we don't know about Rafflesia. We know a little bit about the chemistry of those smells, um, but we don't fully understand how that pollination mechanism with flies works and so working with mathematicians like Javi and, and the team is a really powerful way to take a biological question and use a mathematical approach to, to reach an answer. And Javi, you know, what were your thoughts when you first were introduced to this work so of nature? I was, I was a bit skeptical but um, Derek reassured me that Chris was a very nice guy. To ah. <laughs> So I, I, gave, I gave Chris a chance and I signed up to the project. Um, at first I was, I was very lost. I, I love never... live TV, I didn't know this. <laughs> uh, I was very, very lost. I had never modeled something as big as Rafflesia. So I, I was lost for a few months and then I found the framework that was sort of working. I showed the results to Chris and he was very enthusiastic about it. So we decided to pursue on. We had to consult some more people and collaborate with some more people along the way, so in particular uh, people from the chemistry labs here in Oxford and fly experts from London. Um, and now we're at a point where we're starting to finally find some answers to the questions we were after from the beginning. One of the things that I love about the approach that you guys use in terms of deploying mathematical modelling to address questions about biology is that this is a flower that we cannot grow here in Oxford and so this is why we have this replica here so I should be clear this is not a real Rafflesia flower. Um, this is made of paper mache, it's one that I made, <laughs> one that I made earlier um, and actually this is the closest you and I have got together to one of these flowers so I, I dedicate a lot of my career to hunting down these flowers with my colleagues in Southeast Asia but sadly we, we can't have them here they're almost impossible to grow uh, and so Mathematical modelling is a very powerful approach to addressing intractable biological questions, ones that we can't study easily in a lab, for example. And that's where mathematicians are so fundamental to the work of biologists, because we can take an abstract problem and we can solve that in a way that we couldn't otherwise. And one of the other things I love about our collaboration, Javi, is that it takes such different forms. I remember one evening when I was at home drawing out diagrams of the different shapes and geometries of Rafflesia and then taking photos of them and sending them to you and then you translated those how? Into, into computer programs essentially to simulate different airflows and different chemical concentrations around the flower and then eventually simulate actual fly trajectories um, that follow some basic rules set by those chemical concentrations. Um, so yes, definitely without the expert guidance from a botanist, it would be impossible for me to tackle this problem. Uh, so that's, I guess, the key idea behind a collaboration. It's joining forces because individually, no matter how good at maths or botany you are, you can't really answer those questions by yourself. And that's, I think, at the heart of our collaborations and how we 
sort of communicate with each other when we're speaking. We're trying to make sure that the other person understands her point, even though the languages we might be coming from are slightly different, obviously. We're all scientists, but we're very different kinds of scientists, and we're using very different terms um, that mean different things. So that's one of the challenges sometimes I find that it's, this is my idea, but how do I actually mm. explain it in such a way that um, you understand why I'm so excited about it? Uh, <laughs> one of the other things I love about our collaborative work, Javi, and I, I wonder if you agree, is to me it feels a creative process. And so people, I think, often think of maths and biology as their sciences and they're not thought of as creative disciplines. And yet I find the approach that we in the team take to addressing questions such as this is a very creative one. So we often sit in um, Derek or Dominic's room up in the maths department and we draw beautiful mathematical symbols all over the whiteboard and we shuffle ideas about and we get photos up on our laptops and we, and we, we ponder over the different flower shapes and sizes and we think. And to me it feels like a, a wholly creative process by which we, we say where is this work going to take us and even though the, the mathematics behind it might be so absolute that someone couldn't possibly think of that as creative. To me, the approach by which we come together and solve problems, it, it feels very creative. What are your thoughts on I, that? I agree. I definitely think that both botany and applied mathematics are as much as an art form as sciences. As a botanist, I imagine it takes so much sort of minute detail uh, like a painter would do to just grow a plant and especially really hard plants uh, to grow, such as parasitic plants, like the case of Rafflesia. And in my case, as a mathematical modeler, I, I start from the basis that I can't capture every single detail. It's intractable, it's impossible, and it's not good practice. Therefore, using some assumptions, I have to be creative in a way that will allow me to capture most of the detail but I'll also be able to write down some equations which I can solve or which a computer can solve in this case. But I definitely take some creative liberties when I am doing that. I, I love your, um, your synopsis there, Javi, and, and how you think about the details as well. Often my experience of biologists, plant biologists, is we are detail-oriented people and sometimes we get lost in the detail, in fact. And just creating this model was an example where there's painstaking detail to make sure that I get it right. And, I find it very interesting working with other people in different disciplines because we take a different approach to looking at those details or to zooming out and, and to, to think that isn't in a way that a biologist might ordinarily think of something. And, and I just think that's just such a, a beautiful process that I think Oxford does so well. And it's one of the things I love about working here. I agree. I feel that in the 21st century, you go to university as an undergrad and learn a specific field and you get taught basically some rules, some dogmas, like this is how we mathematicians, we physicists, we chemists, we biologists do things. But in the real world, when you're doing actual research, your rules are only mild indications to what you should do. And you should actually go out, out of your building, go knock on people's doors in the building next door and say, okay, we're interested in this. Would you be willing to help us? Would you be interested in joining this project? And I feel that that's something that the Oxford Applied Maths Department, or the group does quite well, as most people within the research faculty have extensive collaboration networks with people both in other maths departments, but also in other sciences. And that's one of the things I value the most about my department, being able to talk to my supervisors about, you know, I'm going to work with Chris on this, and they're flexible about it, and they're happy that I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely good scientific practice to carry on words and then learn from people in different departments who have had different experiences. In this case, I think there's a very clear uh, advantage for you, which is that you've seen this plant. I've never seen this plant. So <laughs> extremely hard to find. I'm sure Chris um, can tell you in far more detail, but as far as I know, they're like a three-day hike away from civilization. I am not one to go on a three-day hike away from civilization in, in the jungles of Southeast Asia. But <laughs> and yet you're the one with the snakes on your I, shirt. I am the one with so. the snakes on my shirt. <laughs> um, but, but definitely when I am modeling this, I need to go to Chris and say, well, you know, is this actually true? I, I think the smell comes from this underside part and Chris can tell me yes, no. I'm sure with you and the other mathematicians in this way because we can solve problems and address questions about this striking work of nature in a way that we just couldn't otherwise.